What's up, guys? Um, my name is David Myhall, and I'm here to talk about burner wallets. Guys. So I'm guessing everybody knows what oh, yo. I'm guessing everybody knows what a burner wallet is. Is there anyone who doesn't know what a burner wallet is? Anybody who's never used a burner wallet before? You can get cool, cool. But you guys have heard of them, you know, like um, so I guess burner wallets are kind of like became well known. I guess they really became well known a year ago at East Denver when um, you know, Austin Griffith built this really cool burner wallet that everyone was buying food and stuff with. Um, and they've really like grown a lot from there and gone a bunch of places. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit about like where kind of where burner wallets have gone on the tech side. And then we're going to run through how to build a burner wallet using the burner factory. And then we're going to do a little like hands-on coding up your own burner wallet. But yeah, to start off... Yeah, so I guess the thing is like a burner wallet's kind of become just this like generic idea, like almost like a different type of DAP. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think like defines a burner wallet? Anyone have? No fees? No fees? No fees? Sometimes that's true. Like the ease and like customizableness of the spin off? Yeah, definitely. Trying to make it like easy to use, easy to, to develop. Throw away. Throw away? Yeah, I guess that's, I mean, that's where the name comes from is that. It's not like it's not something you install. It's just you can use it and then you can get rid of it. Yeah, so I put together kind of th these are the attributes that stick out in my head. That this is a these are web-based wallets, so you don't need to install anything. You don't need to use like an app on your phone, but you also you also don't need like MetaMask to use these wallets. Um, not sure how much this mic is working. Um, so you don't need to install anything to use it. You can just you know everyone's got a web browser. Uh, usually the private key is stored in local storage, which kind of has like pros and cons, obviously, but the, the big pro is that you don't need to install anything. Um, and like the goal that we're I think working towards is trying to, to give this Web2 experience. You know, people are not used to having to install browser extensions just to use a website. And that gets even more complicated when you're on a phone. Like there's still, on desktop, everyone kind of uses MetaMask. On the mobile, like there's still... There's a few different like competing DAP browsers, but that's still like a little in concrete. So we're trying to kind of get rid of all that noise and just give you like a, a website that works the way most people are used to websites working. Um, so there's been, you know, again, like a year ago, Austin kind of came out and, and launched this idea. And from there, there was kind of this explosion of different people and companies and stuff trying to do their own burner wallet. So you got in the middle there, that's like the the OG burner wallet. Um, there was Connext, which is the, the project working on state channels. They built kind of their own burner wallet called the Die Card uh, that lets you send and receive die on state channels. Uh, these guys flex apps in Australia. Like they've been doing a bunch of cool stuff with burner wallets. They've been doing a lot on like the gaming side, which I think is a really cool spot because you can kind of have these like fun, simple web-based games people are used to, but like you can put money behind them now. Um, anybody know? Let's see. There's a few other companies and projects that I've done. It. Any any important ones I'm missing? Anyone knows? Well, yeah. There's there's a bunch of them. So, kind of uh, like around in the summer last year, um, I was I was working with Austin and some other people and trying to kind of you know maintain this project and realizing all these different people have different ideas. Can the burner wallet do this? Can we add a feature for that and stuff like that? And we're Realizing that the burner wallet is kind of more than just one wallet, but it's really like a, pl uh, a platform. You know, so we want to make this platform where anybody has some idea about some dApp they want to build, they can, you know, they can go build it themselves, but we also want to like give them um, some libraries and a code base to build on. So I made what I call the burner wallet too. I don't think that's like the best name, so if anyone has name suggestions, let me know. Um, but the idea is instead of like one, you know, the original burner wallet was just like a React app. And so when people wanted to make their own, they would fork that and they would try to figure out how to customize that. So what we kind of learned from that is that, you know, we can build a, a system of libraries. So instead of like customizing this whole app, you can just kind of take the pieces you want. You can install some libraries, customize them. Um, this little graphic here, it's, it's almost a little outdated, but it shows kind of the structure of one of these wallets. You've got these little Lego blocks, you've got some at the bottom are kind of the more like blockchain-y stuff, uh, like 
things that can sign messages and relay transactions. Um, you've got kind of like your UI layer in the middle and you've got like a bunch of assets and, and at the top of the stack we have plugins. So plugins are kind of the, these little self-contained modules that extend, um, extend the user experience and, and provide new features. Um, so this has been like a, a really, you know, it's a powerful set of libraries and one of the things that it's enabled is the burner factory. Has, has anybody used the burner factory? Nobody. So I'm going to do a quick demo of kind of how this works, but uh, you're also you're welcome to um, go to burnerfactory.com and kind of play with this on your own while I go through it. So I'm trying. Uh, yeah, it's. There's no password, there's just like one of those sign-in screens. There we go. Make this a lot bigger. If you go to burnerfactory.com, as, as you can see, the, the design uh, has some, uh, it's, it's a little bit lacking, but it still has some really cool features. So when you get here, um, you'll probably have to log in. You have to log in with your GitHub account, the only login we support right now. Um, once you're logged in, you see this toolbar up here, and I'm just gonna go to create wallet. And so um, there's just gonna be this kind of like wizard that we go through with uh, kind of defining all the attributes of a wallet. So I'll call this Denver wallet. And uh, I mean, one of the things that I guess we haven't really talked about, but has kind of defined the burner wallet, especially the burner wallet that was used at Denver last year and, and a lot of these events, um, is not the wallet itself, but it's this idea of a local coin. Uh, creating a coin that's used just for event, just for like a fixed period of time, um, which is a really powerful idea. I, I remember when I got my Buffa die last year and they were like, oh, this is $40. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to like keep those $40, like I'm just going to turn it into die and keep it because that's a bunch of money. And then it wouldn't let me. And then I was like, oh, I guess I have to spend this. So it's a cool way of incentivizing. You know, you still have an open economy. You can send, receive tokens with anyone. It's a kind of permissionless system. But, you know, you have this incentive to use it like within a couple days because, you know, once the event is over, you're, it's going to be worthless again. Uh, so the factory, the burner factory kind of enables you to do that easily. So we're going to go to create a new token here. Um, let's make Buffa die 2. Let's call this. So we've defined our name. Oh, we can attach a, a icon. I think I have some Buffa die pictures somewhere. Well, I'll, I'll skip that for now. Oh, let me just add a. Uh, I'm just going to add one of these burner logos. Perfect. Uh, no, it'll take whatever. Um, we don't... So basically the, the image is only used, it's not posted on chain or anything. Um, but the wallet will include that image and we don't have anything compressing it right now. So if you use a really big image, your users will have to download that. Um, but that'd be a good feature, I guess. So you have two different types of tokens you can create. You can create kind of a back token and an unbacked token. Um, you know, back token kind of goes back to this original idea of like we're making a token that that wraps die or wraps something else. Um, so wrapping, you know, making a token that wraps X die means we have a token that's actually worth some money. It's actually got some value, uh, but at the same time, we can it's still kind of a local coin. We can add other attributes to it. Um, Unback token, it's a little easier. It's like you just can kind of mint them at will. So it's like. Easier to run an event, you don't have to worry about losing money, but um, of course now you're making like a shit coin. Um, oh, and the other thing, you know, so if you are, you know, we were noticing that people, you know, didn't really want to use these backed XDI tokens because it takes a bit of money and then you find you have these events and you give out a bunch of money and then people use a little bit of it and then like most of it gets lost. So one feature we've added to this is a recovery period. Um, so you can say like after seven days, um, if someone, you know, if we give out these paper wallets, 
people have a burner wallet with a bunch of tokens in it, but if they don't touch that for seven days, we can sweep that back. Uh, so that lets you kind of like, you know, manage your losses a bit. I'm just going to do an unback token for now because this is just a presentation. But so we're making an unback token on the XDAI chain. It'll expire in seven days. Um, cool. So there's our buff die one token. And we're going to add just a couple other tokens to go with it. Where's X die? I've made quite a few tokens, as you can see. So we'll do X die. We'll do ETH. And I don't know what. And die. SpongeBob coin. SpongeBob We can add SpongeBob coin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good set of coins right there. I'll put SpongeBob at the top. I think I made SpongeBob coin for one of the, the blog posts. If you look up like Burner Wallet blog posts, one of them is about making SpongeBob coin. Cool. So this is our list of assets we're going to use. Um, but you can basically add, you can make your own asset. You can add things like ETH and DAI, you know, tokens that already exist. Um, yeah, and you can import assets. So. That's our list there, and now we get to this plugin page. So, as I was mentioned before, we have this, um, you know, structure where you can add different modules, and and we have a pretty like large list of plugins at this point. Uh, mostly, mostly plugins that I've built, but we're starting to get uh, third-party companies that are coming in and building plugins because you know it's a great, really easy way to market your product. You know, all these these companies like spend all this time building like some really complex product product that's really cool but sometimes it's hard to get normal people to use it and sometimes one of the easiest ways to to show it off is just stick it in a burner wallet like don't make people install anything to use your stuff so um, yeah plugins can like really range in the complexity and what they do you can see we have like a metamask plugin so that's like a very tiny little plugin this just basically lets you connect your metamask account if you use it in a browser um, ENS plugin yeah, that's just gonna like do ENS name res resolution. Uh, but some of them, let's see. We have things like, I'll add uh, Carbon. So Carbon is a on-ramp, like a credit card on-ramp. Um, they don't work in the USA. Actually, honestly, they don't work in Canada either. I don't think I've been to a country where <laughs> it works, but it's really cool if it works. So like that's like more of like a larger plugin. This is something that's gonna add like a whole page to the app and add like a lot of user interface. Um, Stuff like that. So let's see if there's any other plugins we want to do. Um, I'm not going to really show this off now, but we're, you know, make, we've made some plugins for uh, events like ETH Denver where people are using this for buying food or drinks. And so we've added menus to, to the wallet and stuff like that. So um, yeah, definitely check out some of these plugins that are there. And there's a lot of plugins that are built but not in the burner factory as well. And we're almost at the end. Let's call this, what are we calling this, Denver 2? Give it a domain. And so, yeah, I'm going to hit publish, which will deploy that token on chain and then build this wallet. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit slow right now. This is doing like a full, like building a whole React app on the server. Um, while it's doing that, I'm just going to show off kind of the other cool feature of the burner factory. Uh, so, at these events, usually, you know, you make your wallet, we've made a token. Um, but now you need to actually get people to use your stuff. So we have this kind of paper wallet building system here uh, where I'm going to make, oh, if, if you missed it, this was the distribution page there. And I opened it in a new tab because this is still building. So I'm going to make a new token set. So let's, let's say I was having a happy hour. I'll call this. I'm going to have a happy hour and I want to make, I'm going to have like 20 people there. So I want to make 20 paper wallets. So this is going to generate 20 paper wallets. Um, the private keys are stored in local storage in my browser. They're not, um, they're not sent to the server there. So I'm going to generate that. And now we can, let's see, assuming that this token has deployed. Yeah. So now I want to airdrop a bunch of was it buffer die? Yeah. Okay. This buffer die one token that I just made. I want to airdrop it to all of these twenty people, so I can add that as an airdrop. Hit distribute, and 
Because this is an unbacked token, again, we can mint as many as we want. And we can mint, we can only mint them through the burner factory. Like people can't mint their own tokens. Um, so it's basically a permissioned coin. So I'm gonna mint 10 tokens per person. That's gonna mint 20 overall tokens. I hit mint. And then this transaction will process. Is anybody going along on this? You're not having any issues, are you? No. Dope. This is going kind of slow. <laughs> Not sure whether or not that worked. <laughs> Sometimes the server needs to get restarted. But um, what that would do is again mint tokens uh, in one. Oh yeah, yeah, it's working. As you can see, it'll slowly refresh the account balances of all these tokens. So each of these um, accounts should have ten buffet die in it now. And so now we just need to make our paper wallets. So I'm going to click on this print download paper wallet page. Oh, this, I can't zoom in on these pages. Um, oh, I guess that works. So yeah, here's like a paper wallet generator. Um, the, the paper wallets are still kind of ugly right now, but we're going to work on making these a little nicer. But they work. Um, what you would do here is um, we have to pick the URL. Um, this Denver 2. And so now this will, all these QR codes will be a URL for... Um, for that burner wallet, let me let's see if this burner wallet's actually finished yet. Oh, it's still going. Yeah, it's kind of slow. That's too bad because otherwise, like, if you scan one of these, it'll basically open a burner wallet, and that burner wallet should already have ten Buffadai two in it. Um, so it is. You can you can customize this. You can put whatever you want here and print these out and like go to an event and hand these out to people, and everybody could scan one and pop this open. Um, the other thing you can do if you don't want to print these out, if you want to distribute the QR codes some other way, there's like a, a this button in the top left where it will make you a zip file with all those uh, QR codes in it. Man, this is still this is still not done. Well, I'm not going to wait for this to to finish building, but as soon as uh, as soon as it at, that did finish, it would deploy this on the burner factory server. Um, and then there you have it. That's like the, the easiest way to, to make a burner wallet. Anybody have any questions about the burner factory? No? Cool. Yeah. So the wallets that you uh, specified, are those like uh, so can anybody like push or push to a on the burner factory? No. So anybody can build a plugin. Right now the burner factory is like run by me. Now again, a plugin plugins do have like you know, not explicitly, but they can access private keys and stuff like that. So, um, if you want to build your own plugin and run your own wallet, like that's awesome. If um, and if you want it to be on the burner factory, just like reach out to me. But like, I want to make sure that the plugins that are hosted on Burner Factory are like somewhat reputable. Like, you know, so I'll just like look over the source code and make sure I'm comfortable with uh, with us pushing those plugins out to people. Um, yeah, so that's the burner factory. Um, this is kind of, there's a lot more stuff coming to the burner factory. It's uh, been like a little neglected as we kind of focus on like event after event. But um, it's a it's an area that I'm really excited about because I'm really hopeful to like bring these happy hours to more events around the world. Um, the burner factory itself is not open. Like almost everything in this project is open source. The factory itself is not. Um, but a lot of pieces of it all are all the every contract it uses is open sourced. Um, yeah, you can look at the the, the GitHub is github.com slash burner wallet, and a lot of the stuff is there, um, but not the factory itself. Partially for security reasons. Yeah, so that's the burner factory. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is get into kind of the workshop part where we're going to actually build a burner wallet. Um, so, I mean, if anyone's like not a coder and this is boring, like no, no hard feelings if you feel like skipping. But um, yeah, if you want to dig into this, go check out this URL here, which will have the 
like kind of the walk through uh, the steps. GitHub.com slash burner wallet slash workshop. This is what it looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to clone this kind of this sample repo. It's github.com slash burner wallet slash sample wallet. Um, you can clone that download. What's that? The Wi-Fi is not working? No, it's dead. Ooh. Well, that kind of messes up my presentation. <laughs> It's working on my phone. Is, is it working? Still no? Does everybody have any issues? Just, yeah. No? Just you? Okay, well, we'll have to go without you. <laughs> I guess it works on some devices. My, my laptop didn't work. Okay, so with my phone, so. That's really weird. Maybe we're like over capacity? Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. Well, um, yeah, you can still follow along. On, I'll be going through it. So, yeah, so you can go clone this repo, uh, this sample wallet repo, and this is like no way to. Can you guys, you guys can hear me fine without this mic. Yeah. Yeah. You know. um, yeah, so clone that, that repo. I'm going to go to CD into that project and then just do a yarn install. Get all those packages. Um, the other thing you need to do is um, to use Infura, which you need if you're doing basically any network except for uh, XDI or like your local Ganache. Uh, you need to create a .env file under under source, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, so under sample wallet source, uh, create a file called .env. And uh, yeah, you need an Infura key. You can uh, use the one that I put in the guide for now. I'll disable it later. <laughs> On GitHub. My stuff is still installing. Good amount of packages that need to be installed. Are other people on the yarn install? Is anyone done with it yet? Was that in uh, basic wallet? What's that? Yeah, sorry, did I say very folks? Sample wallet, yeah. Is anybody's yarn installed done yet? Here's it done? Okay. Let's wait another second. Oh, well, I have to wait for mine to finish. Where does this go? It goes in source. Let's see. Um, yeah, so the folder is sample wallet. So under sample wallet source, uh, just a file called .env with just this. Yeah. 
Dot env, yeah, I'll, I'll leave this over here. Still chugging along. So if you've if you've finished your yarn install and you've made that .env file, then you can just run yarn start in the in the root uh, the root of sample wallet, and that'll start your dev server and hopefully start up a burner wallet. Is expected eight point. I'm still installing. I should have done this ahead of time. What module? Uh, I think you're in. Uh, I think you're in the wrong repo. You need to to clone sample wallet. So, so the workshop repo has a wallet in it. That's like the um, that's like the end result of the workshop. <laughs> um. But yeah, this one right here, burner wallet slash sample wallet. All right, mine's done. So, so yeah, once this is, yeah, turn this off. No, there's not supposed to be basic wallet. This one doesn't have basic wallet. It's just a, just a simple wallet. So yeah, once yarn once yarn install has finished and you've added that .env, just go yarn start. And then you'll have to restart the whole server after you finish that. Is anybody's wallet up and running? Yeah? And you got it in your browser? Awesome. So I have a question. So this wallet that you're pulling up right now, mm -hmm. is this the same wallet that you would get when you scan one of those code from the factory? Yeah. It's a different white generator. Yeah, it's a different code base. Uh, I mean, with the factory is basically like the point of the factory is that you don't need to code, but it's basically just doing this. Um, like what the factory is literally doing is it's like writing some JavaScript files and then doing a, a build on the server. Um, so it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mine is up here. Uh, index. So the the goal of like all these this burner wallet two stuff is that you just have like an index that basically defines which modules you're adding um, and then the rest is just like a bunch of npm packages so what the burner factory does is it just creates that index.ts file oh man i'm having the same issue in the root ah thank you that would maybe make sense yeah i think you're right Try that again. Yeah. Yeah, that's it? Okay. So the, it should be in the root, not in the source, so it should be in the sample wallet folder. Yeah? Um, do you have MetaMask open? 
No, or like on your like in that browser? No. I don't know. <laughs> but if it's working, we'll complain. And it shows zeros for account balances? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I have you probably don't have any money either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is my account that I've already used. Alright. How many people have this up? Wait. A couple people are still working on this. Well, we'll get wait another minute just to try to get that up. If you've got it up, you can take a look at this index.tsx file, which will give kind of a uh, outline of the structure of this. So there's kind of two main modules. There's a, a burner core class. Burner core is the, the part that's responsible for like all the, the blockchain-y stuff. So signing messages, relaying transactions, querying things on chain. Um, and burner core is just like a straight JavaScript library. It's not React, um, which means you can do it in... Um, well, there's a feature that we're announcing on Friday that is not a burner wallet, but uses burner core. Um, so come to the talk on Friday. Um, and then the other kind of main module is this modern UI. That's kind of like the core React component. Um, so you just pass that, the, the burner core, and a list of plugins, and you can have a title. So I can call this Denver. Yo. And this should update. Denver, yo. All right, I'm going to keep moving uh, along through this. Next thing we're going to do is add a plugin. Um, so the one I put here is ENS because it's just like a, a good, simple plugin. Um, so I'm going to stop this server and just do yarn add and then add this ENS plugin package. Cool, so mine has installed, so now I'm going to go to this index file and I'm going to import it. So import ENS plugin. And once you import that, you're going to add it to this list, this array of plugins. So we already have one called exchange, which comes um, in that repo. We're going to do exchange, comma, new ENS plugin. I'm going to go start up that dev server again. Did anybody start up yet with the, the ENS plugin? Mm -hmm. So you can go to, let's see, hopefully mine's up in a sec. The way I test is I go to, and this won't work because mine's not started up yet. Go to send, and my test is italic.eth. So if you type that in, you should see a little like drop down menu. You seen that? Yeah. Awesome. Um, you don't have to actually go through with the transaction, but you can. Well, I guess it won't let you send anything, probably. Let's see. Okay. Mine is up, so I'll just show if I type italic.eth, we have this drop down um, where it show, looks up that ENS address. I can go 0.1 xdi. And then on this confirm page, it will reverse resolve that. Um, 
Call it I'm not actually going to send him money. He's got enough. Um, how are we? How are we doing? Anyone still working on the ENS thing? Nope. Cool. Next, what's that? Uh, is it ENS dash plugin? ENS dash plugin. Yeah. Is it? What area do you get? Oh, no, that's right. You need, um, in your code, you need to define a whole So you import, you import it from ENS plugin, but import it as ENS plugin. Yeah, variables can't have dashes in them. So import it like that, and then you just want to say new ENS plugin. So the next thing we're going to do is add a token. So um, out of the box, we have DAI, XDAI, and ETH in our wallet, um, and those are basically like pre pre-included uh, assets because they're kind of the, the assets that we can assume like a lot of burner wallets want to use. But we can also add our own. So I'm going to go back here. In uh, line three where we're importing these assets, I'm going to add uh, import a class called ERC20 asset. And now I'm going to define a new variable. Uh, I'm going to import the MKR token. So I'm going to make a new object, um, and I give it an ID. So you give it an ID and a yeah, an ID and a name. The ID is what's used like internally within the wallet to identify this asset. The name is what gets displayed. So I'll do MKR for the ID and Maker for the name. Um, you need to give a network. Um, basically, everything in the burner wallet's designed. The burner wallet's designed to work on many different uh, chains at the same time. You know, originally it was like just XDAI and mainnet, um, but you can do things on test nets, you can do whatever. So um, a lot of things in burner wallets you have to define your network by the ID. Um, ID number one is mainnet, ID number 100 is XDAI, uh, the test nets all have their own, like the, the um, Rinkby testnet is 4, Gorley testnet is 5, Covan is 42, but this is mainnet maker, so we'll give it number 1. And then the only other thing we need is the address. So this is the address of the token contract. I'll copy it from here. The other thing I'll copy, so these are, these are the things that are required to import a new token. Uh, there's a couple other optional attributes you can add. If you add a price symbol, then it will like look up from some API the market price, and it'll display in dollars. Um, I'm going to skip that one for now, but I will add an icon URL, which I just stole from their website. So this is what we need to define this new asset, and once we have that, we can just add it to um, this list of assets. I'll add it right before xdi. Um, and remember, this is just a variable, so I called it MKR. We're going to add MKR there. Let this reload. And there it is. We've got Maker added to the wallet. Has everybody gotten there? Awesome. And now we're going to add... Um, so by default, we have this exchange plugin in here where we... Oh, there's a version of this that looks a little nicer, but the exchange plugin lets you convert between different asset types, and um, it's really easy. If we want to add MKR, we can add a new Uniswap exchange pair. So I'm going to spread this out. Basically, just copy. You can see this line where there's new Uniswap die. We're going to copy that and do new Uniswap MKR and save that. And so what that will do is that will let us convert between ETH and MKR in this exchange plugin. So I think this is reloaded. So I have some ETH. If I wanted to convert, actually I'll do some of that. Well, I'll skip it for now. But <laughs> um, what's that? Yeah, mainnet block times and stuff. I was like, that'll be a that'll go slow. But this is what we need to convert between ETH and Maker. Um, so this is like a, this is it for like the basic wallet. This is if you want to just make a wallet that has like kind of the pre-existing functionality. You can add your own tokens. You can add plugins and stuff like that. 
Um, the next thing we're going to do is like look at building our own plugin. But before we go there, does anyone have any questions about this so far? Uh, it's this button under apps. Cool. So now I'm going to get my NPM installed and started before I start talking. Um, so yeah, so we're going to kind of start fresh again um, and go to this sample plugin repo. So it's github.com slash burn a wallet slash sample plugin. Uh, and you can clone that into a, a separate folder. Once you do that, we're going to do the same process as before, a yarn install and um, yarn install and create that .env file. If you don't like this typo, you can refresh the page and that'll go away. Static. Um, <coughs> makes it long. Is anybody's yarn install done? Nope, still going. <coughs> While that's installing, I'm going to copy this same .env file, do the same thing. Um, the difference is in this new, this new repo, this sample plugin, um, this is a, what's the word for a repo with multiple projects in it? Um, mono repo, yeah, I blanked on that one. Uh, this is a mono repo with uh, like three different packages in it. So there are two wallets, basic wallet and local wallet, and then another package for our plugin. So we do need, well, we need to put that .env just in the basic wallet folder. Um, so again, that path would be um, sample wallet, or sorry, sample plugin slash basic wallet slash .env. You're going to copy that same Infura uh, key again. Oh, okay, so mine is done. So I'll just kind of keep going with this. I know some people might still be installing. Um, once that installs, you want this .env file, and then we're going to do the same yarn start. Oh. Sorry, what's that? Yarn start? Yeah, yeah, that was, so it's actually not yarn start, it's yarn, um, we, we have these two different wallets in this repo. There's one called basic wallet and one called local wallet. Uh, the idea is basic wallet would be the wallet you would actually deploy. Um, local wallet is... Uh, slight, customized slightly different uh, to work on Ganache. You know, when you're building a plugin, you probably want to be uh, testing against Ganache a lot of the time. So you can do start local or start basic. Um, I'm going to do start basic. For, for this workshop, you should do start basic because um, we're going to be working with a contract that's already deployed. But if you were like building your own and testing against Ganache, um, if you do start local, it does some nice things like it'll uh, transfer some ETH from your Ganache into the burner wallet so you have some ETH to play with and stuff like that. So this is starting up. So I guess while this starts up, I'll talk about the, the different things that a burner wallet plugin can do. Um, 
The simpler ones is that you can add like a page and buttons to the app. Um, so let's see, the first thing we're going to do is just add this static page. Actually, the static page is already there, but um, every plugin is defined by an entry point file. So if you look at my plugin slash source slash my plugin, you see a file that looks like this. So if you're making a plugin, you're going to make a class, and that class will have a initialize plugin function. And then in this function, you're basically going to kind of like define everything you want your plugin to do. So I'm going to call add page, and I'm going to give it a, a path and a React component. Uh, so that will kind of use the burner wallet's internal router and add a new page in the wallet. We're also going to add a button to the home page so that people can get to that page. So that'll be add button. Um, you can add buttons to different parts of the app, but the place that you probably want to add a button is to the apps section. Um, the other thing you can do is you can add, you know, so if you're making a React component, you can make one that has its own page, or you can make a React component and stick it in like predefined positions within the app. So um, I have this component called my element, and I'm going to put that in home middle. Um, oh man. <clears throat> Looks like there's a, a bug in this. Okay, cool. Try to speed through this. I'm going to comment out line 10. Looks like there's a bug there. Um, why is that not working? Has anybody else seen this error? Uh, mine started, but it's blank. But, it's blank, but the page is blank, or like there's, it's not showing a wallet? Okay. This worked when I did it before. I'm going to do one more quick yarn install. I guess since I only have a couple minutes left, I'm going to kind of like just uh, skim over the, the features that, that plugins have and that we would add. Um, So plugins can kind of you can add these pages. You can do a bunch of things like that um, within the page. There are a bunch of components that are made available. So there's like, for example, a page object is really simple. It gives you like a title at the top and like a close button. But there are some components that are like um, invisible components, like this one account balance. That component will you can see here we're gonna um, say we want to get the account balance of X die, and we give it a render function. That will um, like automatically update the, that render function with the account balance of that asset for the user. So like if you want to show how much XDI a user has, you can use this account balance component and display it like that. Um, QR codes. One of the kind of main features of a burner wallet is this ability to scan QR codes. You can scan paper wallets, you can scan other people's burner wallets and stuff like that. Uh, you can, with this uh, on QR, uh, on QR scanned function, you can give it a function and define like some special um, logic for scanning QR codes. So an example of this is um, we're working with a company called Ching that's building like point of sale systems, and so they have their own version of QR codes. They have like um, you know the idea is there would be some iPad in a store, you like ring up an order, and they show you the iPad with a QR code on it. Uh, so they built a plugin so that when you scan their QR code, it'll you know, kind of parse it and continue normally. Um, the the end parts of this uh, workshop were just how to uh, read and interact with contracts. That's kind of like the, the main feature of dApps. Um, so I built, I'll just do a demo. Um, So this is the this is the end result. This the code base for this wallet is actually the code base that's in that workshop repository. So this is a burner wallet I made, but I added this name tag plugin. So you can see there's a name tag thing here, and what that is is this is a plugin that connects with a on chain contract. That's like the simplest contract. It's like address to string. Um, so I go in here and I this is my account, and I'm gonna. 
put the name tag of David and hit sent. So again, this is like a, a page that I've added. Um, when I hit set, it's going to make that contract call. Uh, this contract is on. Let's see. No, is this not working either? Oh, now it worked. Maybe I was just impatient. Um, yeah, so that worked. So I, I typed in David, and now it set my name tag to David. It shows that here on the home page too. Um, so this is just a simple, I can show you the code for it. Um, oh, it's not there. We've just added these simple functions to our plugin. Like this is the function called set name, where we're going to ask it for a Web3 object. Um, you're going to give it that network ID that we talked about. So since this is on Gorly, I said give me Web3 number five. This gives you a Web3 object, and then from there you can do everything you would normally do with Web3. You know, this line here, it's just we're making a contract and we're calling a method on it. Um, you can do the same thing for reading. Here we defined a, a function where we um, do a call on a contract to get that name tag. And then within your React component, one of the props that it's given is a, a plugin prop. So with that plugin prop, you can call like get name. Um, and the really cool thing about this, um, Let's see. You can see I just set my name tag, David. Um, this is a brand new burner wallet. I don't have any tokens there. So um, the contract uses Gas Station Network. It, do you guys know what Gas Station Network is? Yeah, so Gas Station Network is a, a system for like meta transactions and relaying transactions. So since the contract supports that, um, I wanted people to be able to use this contract without having to pay gas. So all I had to do was add another gateway in that index. Basically, I import another um, module, add it to this list of gateways, the gas station network gateway. And then when I make this function call, set name, um, I give it a sender, and I just set this use GSN to true. Um, that's all you need to do to turn like a normal, uh, a normal transaction into a gas station network transaction and let users call functions without having to pay any gas. Um, I think I am just about at the end of my time. Um, sorry we didn't get to kind of get all the way through that workshop, but um, yeah, I'm happy to go through this with anybody else, and, and uh, you can see all the instructions on this workshop page there. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, <laughs> no, none of this was with Injected Web 3. Not, no MetaMask. So, um, in, where is that index file? So those would be um, gateways is what we call kind of the way that you connect, that your wallet connects to, um, connects to the chain. So you can see here we've def defined three gateways. Uh, we have an Infura gateway. So this is not using MetaMask, it's directly going to. Um, uh, this package is like, uh, defining our connection from our wallet to Infura servers. We have another one, XDI gateway, that's connecting us to XDI servers. Um, there is an injected gateway here, and that does use injected uh, injected Web3, but that's optional. And oftentimes, I find it's actually like causes problems sometimes. Like, you can't. Use, you, um, yeah, I mean, you should. I don't think you should ever like only have injected gateway unless you have like a specific project. Um, you know, kind of the point of the project is to not need MetaMask. We wanted people to be able to use MetaMask if they want to, so that's why we have these packages. Um, and as you saw there, the, if we wanted to add uh, the gas station network, we would do um, new GSN gateway, which would be a way to connect the gas station network. We also support, there's a company called Rivet that's basically a competitor of Infura, but they provide these same Endpoints. Um, you can add the. You can add a rivet gateway and do that. Um, you basically like these packages define how your wallet connects to the chain. Any other questions? Good question. Uh, yeah, I missed when you were enforcing the plugin. Is it always blank in the workshop? 
Uh, I think so, and if it's not, just come talk to me. But yeah, basically it's npm install a package, um, import it at the top of your file here, and then add it to this list of plugins. And that's it. Um, there, um, not scheduled to, but I could if um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing anything during ETH Denver, so I might. Uh, if there's time, I might do it then. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's going to be like a really intense burner wallet um, for um, for ETH Denver. So you'll have to. It'll be how you pay with food. It'll be a DAO. It's going to have like tons of cool stuff. So. Be ready for that. That'll show, like, these were some very simple burner wallets. That will show, like, the very limits of what a burner wallet can do. Um, and I think at 1.30 on Friday, I'm giving a, a talk on stage at ETH Denver, um, where we'll be kind of talking about kind of big picture burner wallet stuff, as well as uh, some announcements, some cool new features that I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, anything else? Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, feel free to uh, come talk to me, or um, you can find me on Twitter or Telegram at D-M-I-H-A-L. And stick around. I think uh, right after this is the Metacartel talk, which is going to be super cool. That's, that's this room, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys.